Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at the solace requirements, in particular the CSC plate and how to record the ACEP number during the container inspection. So firstly, what is a CSC plate? The CSC plate is, is this little plate on the left door, right? And it's kind of like the vehicle registration disk that we have on our cars. If you look at that disk, you know, it's got the VIN number, it's got um, the tear weight, it's, it's got the license number, it's got the expiration date. In a similar fashion, the, the container has a CAC plate so you know the requirements and you know if it's seaworthy. So here's a closer look at a CSC plate. The main information that we need is the ACEP number, right? That's over here. However, it's got quite a bit of of other information. It's got the maximum gross weight. It's got the allowable stacking weight. Um, and what most of the guys are doing was they knew they had to take down something from the CSC plate. So instead of taking down the ACEP number, they were they're actually taking down like these numbers here, which is wrong, right? So that becomes a finding in the audit. So the details you need is actually in this, this rectangle over here. I had one instance where the ACP number was actually at the bottom over here. So if at first you don't see it, just check the whole thing because it may be that the person that engrave this plate actually change the template right the ACEP number it stands for the approved continuous examination program so if you see that ACEP number it means the container is seaworthy because the company that owns the container is part of this program and sends the containers for inspections regularly an alternative to that is you'll see a date there, which I'll get into that a bit later. A lot of guys have been complaining that the CSE plate is so badly rusted that they can't see the information on it. So what I would suggest is you take a Koki pen. Now this whole plate is engraved, right? So if you take a Koki pen and you try to just rub it over this engraving and then you take like thinners in a rag and you wipe the plate then the ink is going to stay inside the engraved area and by doing so it's going to become visible so that's the best way the other thing that guys were doing was they were taking pictures of the whole container like this and in doing so, you can't see the details in the CSC plate. So ensure that you get a close-up because the photo acts as a backup. So in the case where the person takes down the details incorrectly or the, in the case where the form is lost, then you know that it's your backup and you can prove that the container is seaworthy. Another instance of this is where if they're not in that um, program, then you'll see an examination date, right, on the plate. In this case, it's the fourth month of 2021. I have not seen many of these. The only one that I came across was where the container was owned by the shipper. So you shouldn't really be seeing this case, but I'll tell you what to do just in case you do find it. Another variant is instead of, of having the date in that format, they have a sticker or the plate is like this. So they either have it in shorthand or they have in Roman numerals and the year. So in this instance, you know that it's due for an exam on in August of 2014. In this case, you know now that if you find a container like this and it's due for an exam and you are going to have your cargo in there during 
the period it needs to be inspected, then the, the chances are that the, the container is not seaworthy and that the risk is going to lie on you and if something happens, they're going to make you pay. So rather in your procedures, have it set out that if you have a container that it falls within this period, then you have to send it back and get another container. Another option is you, you stipulate with the transporter that they need to check the container and ensure that it has an ACEP number or that it can be used within this time period and there's no examination due. Alternatively, tell the shipping line that you only want containers that have an ACEP number. So that's going to be the best way to cover yourself. And in doing so, you can ensure that you are compliant for this requirement and, um, and basically you are safeguarding yourself. I hope that you found this video informative. Please subscribe to our channel because we are going to be updating it regularly, as regularly as we can. There's a, a lot of new things that are in the pipeline that's going to come out um, in terms of the regulations and legislation. So. Um, I'm sure you're going to find it valuable. Thanks for watching.